You don't know what it's like to be me. What if we're all the same in different kinds of ways? Can you, can you relate? We both know what it's like to be her. We both know what it's like to feel pain. But I think it's safe to say. Have you ever been left when you should have been loved? Has there ever been a time when you stayed but you should have run? Cause I've been real, I've been fake. Been a sinner, been a saint. I've been right, I've been so, so wrong. Yeah, I've made my mistakes. Now I don't know what it's like to be you don't know what it's like to be me what if we're all the same in different kinds of ways can you can you relate we both know what it's like to be her we both know what it's like to feel pain but i think it's safe to say to be you don't know what it's like to be me. but by the grace of god we'll see each other's heart can you can you Let the nations be glad. 
Church goes forth in the Holy Spirit's power with the glories of the gospel to exclaim. Please stand with us as we continue our worship with the nations around the world on this World Communion Sunday as we worship in Christ alone this morning. Let's continue today. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comfort, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, Took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless pain. This gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones He came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the love. Just 
are so grateful for that power of Christ today. Please be seated as we continue in our worship today. Good morning. We're going to ask the kids to come forward at this time. And uh, while you are taking communion up here, uh, we will also be taking communion um, with the kids as well downstairs. So it's good to be part of that all together. And uh, we're glad that they're here this morning. Let's pray together. Jesus, we come to you incredibly grateful for a new day to serve you and to be together with your family and our church and just um, all that that means to us. We thank you for these children, and um, I thank you for helping them through another week at school and just the different responsibilities that they have. And uh, I just pray that um, whether we are up here or downstairs, I pray that we would just be able to quiet our hearts um, to listen to you, that as we take um, communion today as a church family, that we would remember the sacrifices that you have made and how we can um, better serve you and serve your kingdom. We thank you for this time that we have together, and um, as always, may it be blessed by you. Amen. you know no yeah you do <laughs> birthdays on sunday that's that's kind of a fun day it's yeah. interesting isn't it, is, it? it is yes, it is anyway thank you for all your your wishes yes i'm i'm just barely over 49 all right and with that lie we'll yeah. ask the ushers to come at this time for our morning offering We had a wonderful faith promise uh, last Sunday, and we praise the Lord for how that turned out. And um, just feel free along the way through these months to take care of that as uh, the Lord leads you. We're going to have our offering this morning, but I ask Todd to pray for it, please. Amen. Amen. Okay. Well, a few uh, weeks ago, maybe even a month or so ago, we, uh, we said thank you to Barb Stewart for her service through the years as a uh, uh, deaconess or deacon. And uh, finally, the plaque, the plaque, a very nice plaque has come in. I'm going to ask you to come at this time, if you would, please. No, I'll, I'll bring it to you. Barbara J. Stewart. Ordained in 1989. I was just... No, I actually was... I was pastoring then. June 18, 2021. The Board of Superintendents and your district honor you at this time of your retirement. Your years of faithful service have not gone unnoticed by the kingdom, by the church, by your co-workers, and by the Savior. Thank you for your sacrificial giving, leadership, and example. May our Lord continue to bless you in your ministry and retirement as he has during these years of active ministry in the Church of the Nazarene. And uh, we have this very beautiful plaque that comes from the General Church. When you walked into the church, did you smell coffee? Yeah. If you like, I don't like, I don't even like coffee, but I smelled it when I first came in. Um, so everyone was a, the, ha the coffee drinkers were very happy. So. Does that not, mean you're unhappy? No, I know. Okay. We're just 
We're not right. old enough to drink coffee yet, so That's right. we're getting there. That's right. um, things that are happening today, um, the teens are meeting at 5 o'clock to go to the Northwest Ohio District NYI Worship, where all teens from this area are going to meet um, together. I believe it's in Tip City or Troy. But anyway, mm -hmm. meet here at the church, and Jeff and Carol will be taking you. Um, happenings this week. You want to tell all right, ladies' tomorrow? Bible study on Tuesday at 930 men's bible uh, time uh, saturday morning at nine in the fellowship hall and then uh, happenings next sunday yep you can do those i am all right there's a lot of information you afraid i'm going to mess it up <laughs> no i just want to be ready okay um all church harvest sun or fellowship is going to be next sunday evening at five to seven at the picnic shelter we're going to have kids games lots of food a bouncy house Ooh. um yeah you can be fun. Yeah. yeah. And then anyway, to, we need you to bring some food. So you need to sign up um, either in the foyer. There's some sheets where the coffee pot is, or you signed up in your Sunday school class. So it will be a fun time, and that's mm -hmm. next Sunday night. In the fellowship committee, if you can make sure you're there at 4:30 at the picnic shelter to help set that up. Also next Sunday is a first responders planning committee meeting, and that's following worship service. And we'll let you know um, more about that. We'll remind you. Um, outreach for September. Okay, outreach for September. We we collected 70 kits. So anyway, that was very good. Maybe 70 plus. We're going to find a a for sure number. Okay. Yes. Are you finished? No. You're not finished. Mm -mm. Well, you finish and then I'll do take care of this. <laughs> okay. All right. Outreach for October is called Babies Are a Blessing. And what, well, this is um, a project sponsored by Women's Ministry. And Clark County, we are going to supply layette items for the Clark County Pregnancy Resource Center for those parents that are choosing life over abortion. And you will see a display in the foyer that will tell you the things that we're collecting. And we have bags for you to collect those things. If you do not want to collect everything on that list, you may collect whatever you want and just put it in that bag, and Women's Ministry will take care of that. Or if you don't like to go shopping, who doesn't like to go shopping? But if you don't like to go shopping, <laughs> yeah, those guys are raising their hands, um, you can talk to Rachel Dement. And Rachel, can you stand so they know where you're at? It's Rachel, okay. See Rachel Dement, give her your money and she will shop for you. So, and if you need to buy some clothes and you want me, and they happen to be my size, you could give me the money and I will shop for you. <laughs> Okay. All right, but anyway, that, this will be a great uh, outreach for October. A couple district events. Um, ladies' Retreat is coming up, the District Ladies' Retreat, October 22nd through the 23rd. And ladies, if you are interested in attending, um, make sure you let me know, and I'll give you some more information. And Empower the Church, which is a banquet um, on the district, and it's sponsored by the Sunday School Department will be on Thursday, October 28th at High Street. It's $15 per person. And Sunday school teachers, SDMI council members, and spouses, um, you, the church will actually pay your way to go. So you need to talk to Carrie Brammer, and um, I don't see where Carrie is right now. She's out in the foyer. Or call the office and let us know. So um, I do appreciate the birthday wishes. I'm glad to keep having birthdays. That's a good thing. But I wanted to, I wanted to, I've been wanting to tell you this. You know, this is a memorable birthday for Beverly Jones. I noticed this on, on Facebook. She turned 79. Do you know what she did for her birthday when she turned 79? She went zip lining. Wow. So I just want to ask you, Keith, are you ready to go zip lining today? Sure. <laughs> okay. Anyway, it'll be fun. The so, question is, are you ready? To I don't know. I yeah. don't know. But right. any, but an inspiration. It is your birthday, but are you going to sit down sometime? I, I, well, as a matter of fact, no. <laughs> Thank you. All right. All right. Do you remember what we were going to do? I almost forgot what we were going to do. Don has a thank you he wants to share with the crowd. Lucretia and I would like to thank the church for all the kindness you've granted us. Uh, we've had, a, I thought it was only four, but we've had five surgeries here. Uh, your knee. <laughs> She'd forgot about it. Well, I just had a knee put in, and it uh, has worked so well that uh, I wanted to thank the church for all the prayers and the cards that you sent us. 
And I also wanted to thank the other kindnesses, that, uh, like Chad coming and digging the snow out of the driveway when her shoulder was still strapped to her. And uh, so we're thank thankful for all the prayers that were generously given and for the answer to the prayers that was yes. We are forever grateful and thankful. Amen. We have a video. and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this in remembrance of me the same way after the supper he took the cup, gave thanks and offered it to them, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. tell you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. I'm going to ask the congregation to stand. As we pray this morning, we want to remember some of our brothers and sisters who are dealing with issues all around the world. World Communion Sunday gives us an opportunity to think about um, those who are persecuted for their faith, those who are suffering both in this country and this town throughout the world. We want to add some of these that we've been praying for, Alicia, Joe's niece, Daryl and Margie, Don and Lucretia, Evie Hennish is doing much better, but pray for her and her mom, Nicole. Jeff and Vicki, pray for Jeff as he's beginning to face some chemotherapy. We want to continue to pray for each of these as well as so many others that have been on our prayer list now for the last few days. And if you have someone that you'd like to represent in prayer, maybe you'd like to just represent the world and people who are in need today, I'd like for you to come spend some time at the prayer altar as we pray this morning. I'll wait for you.
Well, let's begin with the prayer Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus. The name that calms our fears, Jesus. The name that is given to the one who would save his people from their sins, Jesus. At that name, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess someday that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We're so thankful we can call upon your name today. You already know it, but we just, we just want to join together with the Holy Spirit and agree that we have some friends, we have some people, we have some that we've never met that we're praying for today. There are some who are literally being persecuted, and we ask God that you would hold their hands and assure them that you never leave them nor forsake them. We have people here at home, we have people in this congregation who are facing chemotherapy. Some dealing with COVID-19. We have people who are rehabbing from surgery and some getting ready to face surgery. And in every situation, you have promised that you would not leave us nor forsake us that you are with us to the end of the age, to the end of the surgery, to the end of the, the anxiety, you promise to be with us. There are those praying for their future. What steps do you want them to take? Lord, you know what they need. You know exactly this season in their lives what you've called them to, the purpose you have for them. Won't you just confirm that and bring peace? There are those concerned about their parents and those who are concerned about their children and, and co-workers. And Lord, we have to be honest today. We, we need to pray for those who would be our enemies. And that's not easy. But you called us to do it. And by your grace, we are. And so today, Lord, as we move towards the very pinnacle of this service, the sharing of your body and shed blood, we pray, God, that your blessing would be upon our congregation and congregations literally throughout the world who are doing the same. Perhaps no other day in the year is the church unified as this day. We give you praise for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Alan Judy has an announcement at this time. We're going to ask him to come. Well, it's finally October. So you, you know how we celebrate things in this country. Everything has a day or a month or something like that. So during this month, we're going to be celebrating not only Pam's birthday, but National Cinnamon Roll Day. <laughs> That's tomorrow, by the way. That's good. Later on, we'll be celebrating National Garlic Lovers Day <laughs> and National Angel Food Cake Day. But here in the church, we'd like to take the month of October to celebrate our pastoral staff by having Pastor Appreciation Month. So as you leave today, there'll be a table set up in the foyer 
and throughout this month. And you can leave gifts and cards for them in these baskets. And don't you think we have the best pastoral staff in the city? Maybe even in the state. So let's celebrate them this month. Thank you. We tried to keep you out of it, didn't we? He still had his chance. Garlic day? I tell you what, if you're thinking about kissing, you better both eat garlic. That's all I know. So last Sunday, Pam and I decided to do a quick meal. We went to Lee's famous recipe, fried chicken, right down the road here. And the little girl who waited on us was a spunky thing. She was on top of it. She took our order. She was pleasant and smiling, which there's a whole lot of places that could take her example. But anyway, Pam looked at me and said, uh, by the way, I think they take the Golden Buckeye card. Now, this lady has been using me for my Golden Buc Buckeye card. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I said, okay, so I pulled my billfold out and I started to pull the Buckeye card out and the little girl looked at me and she said, no bother, I believe you. <laughs> yep, that's what she said. The aches and the pains and all that goes with growing older, huh? And all those folks who want to say that's where they are, say amen. amen. I, wonder, uh, I wonder what a 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 year old Jesus would have been like had he lived those years on this earth. We say he experienced humanity. But did he experience all that it's like to be human? He didn't make it to his golden buckeye card. Well, at least not in chronology or in numbers of years. However, Jesus does relate to our humanity, and you need to hear it. Somebody needs to hear it more than others maybe today. Listen, Jesus understands he really does. In fact, his humanity went way beyond anything we have or ever will experience. We've been looking at the Psalms. So today I'd like for us to look at Psalm number 22. Psalm number 22. Now Psalm 22 has been called the Psalm of the Cross. In a moment, you'll begin to be reminded of why. And when you read it, you are immediately reminded of incidents, experiences that happened to Jesus during his final years or final hours. Now, we might ask the question, so was this psalm a prophecy that Jesus was just fulfilling? Maybe. Or... Did the gospel writers, knowing Psalm 22, realize that Jesus experienced what the psalm writer experienced years before and just simply put it together with Jesus and then wrote the gospels with Psalm 22 in mind? Maybe. Or was it that Jesus, who knew this psalm from childhood, realized and experienced exactly what was going on in Psalm 22 and maybe even maybe even thinking about Psalm 22 while he was hanging on the cross and reciting it, sometimes silently, sometimes audibly, possibly. Regardless of these theories or these ideas, it will be obvious to us again today that Psalm 22 definitely was intermingled with what happened at the cross that day. And as we move towards communion, and on this day, communion is the pinnacle of our service. Let's note that Psalm 22 reveals not only those things, but also that Jesus really does understand. Jesus understands. Repeat that with me. Jesus understands whatever it is you're going through. 
So let's begin. Uh, let's go with the first and most obvious. Psalm 22, verse 1, it says this very simply. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my cries of anguish? Hundreds of years before Matthew 27, verse 45. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemme sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Word for word. There are those who would say that the Son of God would, or that God would never literally forsake his Son. Those others would counter that idea and say that maybe by referring to the unique calling of Jesus to carry the sins of the world, you know, Jesus is holy, heaven is perfect, he's not allowed to have uh, unholy in his domain, God would not have unholy in his domain, Jesus was a spotless lamb, for those moments on the cross he became filthy dirty by carrying our sin, Jesus carried our sin. Did God turn his back on his son during those moments? Or did the burden of carrying all that sin cause Jesus to feel like he had been abandoned, forsaken? Either way, the reality Jesus was experiencing on the cross was that he believed he was being forsaken. My God, why have you forsaken me? Have you ever felt that way? You ever felt like God has forsaken you? We're not talking about whether he literally did or not. Did you ever feel like God had forsaken you? How about those times when your prayers seem to bounce off the ceiling? Anybody like that? I've been there. Or like the Bible writers who said, how long, O Lord? Have you ever said that to him? Jesus understands. He understands the feeling of being forsaken. Secondly, I want us to notice Psalm 22, verses 7 and 8, the fact that that person was mocked and humiliated. It says in Psalm 22, verse 7, All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. Verse 8, He trusts in the Lord, they say. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him since he delights in him. And then the humiliation idea, 17, Psalm 22, verse 17. All my bones are on display. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. Does that sound familiar? You remember the story when the soldiers grabbed the garments of Jesus and divided them among themselves? But did you know that the tradition was to take those garments and make rags out of them? So we look, at, we look at Matthew 27 again. Fast forward to the future. Listen to this. He saved others, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. He claimed, I am the son of God. In fact, that's the most severe mocking that Jesus experienced, the fact that they actually questioned his deity, if you are the Son of God. Listen, folks, people will always mock true believers. You ever been there? Somebody ever said to you something like this? How come your God treats you that way? Why did he let that happen? You ever had somebody say to you, if God really loves us, then why does he let bad things happen to people? Anybody ever said that to you? You ever been put on the spot, Christian? How many of us have been put on the spot by somebody who said, why, why, did that, why does God allow that to happen if he's real? And mocking our God. It's interesting. Um... Someone thought they were talking behind your back, and somehow, probably through social media, guess what? It's going to come out, isn't it, these days? Probably through social media you found out what they said, and you were humiliated. 
ever been humiliated through social media? It happens. It hurts. Jesus understands being mocked and humiliated. Third, thirdly, I want us to notice that this psalmist experienced fear and rejection. Psalm 22, verse 12. Many bulls surround me. Strong bulls of Bashan encircle me. Roaring lions that tear their prey open their mouths wide against me. We fast forward to Matthew 27, verse 39. It says, those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads, surrounding him with rejection. I know that there are those of you who feel like, and maybe you are, the only Christian where you work. I know that there are those of you who feel like, and maybe it's true that you're the only Christian in your extended family. Oh, family reunions can be very interesting sometimes. I know that some of you, maybe it's true, have been the Christian, the only Christian in the marriage. Maybe you didn't start out that way, but you've discovered that you're unequally yoked, as the Bible describes, and that chafes, it hurts, it's hard to deal with. Jesus understands fear, and he understands rejection. How about this one? The psalmist experienced broken and bleeding and being thirsty. Psalm 22, verses 14 through 16. It says, I am poured out like water and all my bones are disjointed. My heart is like wax. It melts away within me. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, a broken piece of pottery. And my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Sounds like grief over his own impending death, his broken heart over his own death. Do we grieve over our own death? I think so. I think that we go through the grieving process before we get to the point where we accept that it's time. I've watched it in many, many people. I've watched people accept it to the point where they're ready. I've had people say to me, People even older than I am, and I'm getting old. I've had people say to me, I'm ready for the Lord to take me home. How many of you heard, usually it's, a, usually it's an elderly person or a person who's had an extended illness, a believer say, I, I, I'm ready. I, I'm ready to go home with the Lord. How many of you heard that, seen that? Yes. Jesus not only likely grieved over his own death, but he certainly grieved over others. Remember, he wept at the grave of his friend Lazarus. Jesus understands. Verse 16, they have pierced my hands and my feet. That was in Psalm 22, hundreds of years before Jesus literally experienced the piercing of his hands and his feet. Nail scars in both. Perhaps you've heard the Chinese proverb, I felt sorry for myself because I had no shoes until I met a person who had no feet. I've had people say to me, some of you say to me, I was walking the halls of the hospital one day and I looked and I noticed there was somebody in so much worse condition than I am. Jesus understands physical pain. I mean, that's an understatement. Jesus understands physical pain, right? But there's one more. Psalm 22, verse 31. Look at this. They will proclaim his righteousness, declaring to a people yet unborn. Now look at these words. He has done it. Does that sound familiar? It, say it with me, is finished. Jesus most likely was at least thinking about this psalm during his time on the cross. John 19.30 says, when he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. And with that, he bowed his head and he gave up his spirit. Jesus had accomplished his purpose. 
to be our sin bearer. He could have stopped the whole thing with just one word, but his love kept him there until the sacrifice was complete. He said of himself, could I not have called down legions of angels to wipe out these guards? And I don't know about you, but if I had been there, I'd been going. But Jesus' love for you and for me kept him there. I don't understand that, do you? I can't get my mind around that kind of love. But Jesus stayed on the cross for you and for me. And even while we could have cared less, while we were still sinners, the Bible says Christ died for us. Is that amazing? Say, I'm amazed. Well, at least most of you are. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse 14. You see, that's not the end of the story. The one thing that's wonderful about this whole story is that Jesus didn't stay dead. <laughs> Listen, Jesus didn't stay dead. And because he didn't stay dead, we have the hope of resurrection life as well. It says so in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 14, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. You cannot preach the whole gospel story and only leave him at the cross. You can't preach the gospel story and leave him in the tomb. Jesus is alive. He is risen. Praise his name. And he told his disciples to remember that sacrifice. And what a way to remember it. A little tiny piece of unleavened bread. Wafers that stick to the roof of your mouth. A little bit of juice. That quite honestly doesn't taste very good. But the remembrance is there each time we do it, isn't it? So this morning, remember, there's a little tiny, very clear piece of cellophane you pull off first. Don't do it yet. Just want you to be aware of it. And then once we take that wafer together, then you pull the second layer foil up to reveal the juice. Don't do that yet either. Because we're going to listen to a song. We're going to meditate on what Jesus has done for us. And then I'm going to instruct us to share together the most wonderful supper that Jesus instructed us to share. Every daughter and every son, to every tribe and every tongue, this is the call, the heart of love. This is the invitation. Table spread with bread and wine, the life and love of Jesus Christ. Take and eat, raise and drink. This is the invitation. This is. See 
night Jesus lifted the bread and he broke it and he gave thanks. He said, this is my body given for you to preserve you blameless unto everlasting life. <laughs> Listen, you don't deserve this and neither do I. But Jesus said, take and eat. Share. And after that, he took the cup, told him to share it. He said, this represents my blood of the new covenant shed for you for the remission of sins. Listen, by his stripes, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. You are forgiven. In fact, if you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, we so believe that this is so powerful that today you can receive His grace and be saved instantly. By His stripes you are healed. Your sins are forgiven. Let us drink. We thank you, our God. We thank you, our Lord, for such a privilege as this. Amen. Let's sing. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Let's stand. Praise him, all creatures here be. outside for these go knowing in confidence that Christ has forgiven God bless you you're dismissed